of Burgundy, by brute force and bribery, has divided France against itself, thus to dethrone its anointed king, Louis XI, and seize the throne for himself. Already half the country has either flocked or fallen to him, and the rebel princes, dukes and barons, have assembled a few miles from Paris, first to sign the great alliance of the public wheel, and then to lay siege to the city and destroy Louis. Duke of Berry at last. Your late cousin. How many men do you bring to our cause? 12,000 fighting men, 16 knights fighting under their own banners. Arbalist, Bowman, Powers, Ram. Good. Now sign the alliance. Yes, cousin. To the new king of France, Charles of Burgundy. To the, the new, new king, king of France. Of May God bless our noble cause. And restore the sacred rights of chivalry to our great houses. Truly spoken. Ours is a noble cause. Aye. If Louis lives, he will absorb our castles, lands, dukedoms. He would make one nation of France, and that nation his. Making nobles of peasants, peasants of nobles. <laughs> now your work begins. One of my men will make himself known to you. He will call himself a lover of good wine. You will ask him the color of the wine, and he will answer the color of royal blood. High in Louis' government, he will be a great help in the furtherance of my plan. Aye. Now let the gates of Paris fall, and every friend of Louis with it. Perhaps there is another way, my lord, to save the shedding of blood. Might we not still parley with the spider? You do not parley with a spider, you squash him! Once more the shadows darken Paris. And now Charles proposes to hang me from one of my own apple trees. No doubt from the very one I was saving for him. So Charles the Rash intends to squash the spider. General Chaban, will our army stand up to Burgundy? Or turn tail and run? We will fight to the last man, my liege. But Burgundy will greatly outnumber us. A large part of our forces are mercenaries who have not been paid in months, and every day are deserting a great number. How about my people? Sire, in Paris there are two kings. Burgundy? No, the king of the vagabonds, Francois Moncobier, master of the arts. Of the criminal arts? You mean Francois Villon, the condemned gallows bird whom you seem unable to catch? Begging your majesty's pardon, this treasonous knave controls more of the city than we do. As a poet of the common people and their acknowledged leader, they pay allegiance to no one but him. He rules the rabble. By poetry? Yes, my lord. He can make you swear black was white and day was night. It becomes a lethal weapon in his fingers. It does indeed. <laughs> Have you gentlemen heard the latest poison from his pen? Who profits by the devil's hire? No man e'er throve on wicked deed. Yet France still struggles in the mire, while good King Louis pays no heed. A weapon on the side of Burgundy, if my provo marshal continues to be blind to his whereabouts. We'll redouble our efforts, sire. Bonjour, bonjour. It's a good, good day and it's free. Bonjour, bonjour. It's a day for amour, mon ami. It's a day you can find the kind of riches that you just can't afford unless you're poor. So brush up the patches on your britches. It's a bon, 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 bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour. It's a good, good day and it's free. Bonjour, bonjour. It's a day for amour, mon ami. It's a day you can find the kind of riches that you just can't afford unless you're poor. So brush up the patches on your britches. It's a
livestock and poultry must be delivered to the city storehouses. The new ration, one loaf of bread daily to each family. All violations punishable by death. startling you, my lady. There's rioting in the streets. I thought I could be of service. Thank you. No, I'm waiting for my carriage. I don't remember having seen you before. Are you a recent member of the choir? Very recent. study me so intently? Because I've never been this close to heaven before, except once. Once? When I saw you walking in the Easter procession, you were wearing your purple cloak with its halo of white fur. Coachman, hurry, hurry, keep our lady waiting. Hurry. Allow me, madam. Oh, dear. Oh, please, allow me. <laughs> Forgive us for startling you, my lady, but there's rioting in the streets. We thought we could be of service. You are very kind, but why do you stare at me thus? Because we've never been this close to heaven before. Except once. What? When I saw you walking in the Easter procession. I was not in the Easter procession. No. The Christmas procession? Never in Paris. Then in Marseille? No. Toulon? No. Dijon? Perhaps... In my dreams? <laughs> Margaret? Oh, milady. Please, watch the first step. Oh, my word, such dainty ankles. Who are 
are you? Francois Villon. Villon, the, the poet? Eternally at your service. Oh, then it's you who've been sending me those insolent ballads. Their only reason to sing praises to your beauty. Don't go. Please, my lady. By your commission. Who is this? I'm glad I do not have a skin plate from your back. Yeah. Fool, get your head out of the stars. Let's go to the tavern. We'll see laughing Margot. And you get. <laughs> <laughs> But we've got something fun. Viva la us! Viva la I've looked around at kings and queens and people on the street. I've talked with men of many means. No wonder that I repeat. Viva la you! Viva la me! Here we go arm in arm in perfect harmony. So if it's ever viva la anybody, it's viva la you and viva la who? Viva la me! Viva la you! Why your majesty risks his person amongst the pack of knaves? Shh. No titles here. Just call me Louis, for assuredly Louis I am. Welcome to my humble heart. And what would you like to soothe the cares of the day? Some wine, your best. And that's just what I have for fine gentlemen. The only place I can get it is from the King's Warehouse on the Seine. <laughs>
I am touched to find so many innocent hearts to greet me. <laughs> we met you, but he didn't miss you. <laughs> These willing wenches have turned my gallows bird into a homing pigeon. Hotswar, you ghost! I thought Louis had you hanged. How'd you get back into Paris? Well, they say the king finds your poetry unflattering. How oh, what? They say Burgundy enjoys them. <laughs> Francois, there's a price on your head. Really? How much? A thousand crowns. I'm worth three times as much. Ten times. <laughs> but what particularly has King Louis ever done to you that you bear him so much malice? From what strange parts have you arrived that you know so little of our Louis' habits? From a crow's nest by the looks of them. <laughs> what has Louis ever done for France? Nothing. Perhaps he's doing his best. Best? Then why is Paris starving? Because you, no doubt, are eating. <laughs> Beware, stranger. You defend a tyrant whose days are numbered. Dear me, who numbered them? I and destiny, between us. It will cost destiny little enough to miscalculate King Louis' days, but it could cost you dear. To skin your fox, first catch him. <laughs> <laughs> the king seems to be rather unpopular in this society. Cutthroats. You'll be lucky if you don't end up roasting on their spit. I'm looking for a man named Rene de Montigny. Who seeks him? A love of good wine. The color of the wine? Color of royal blood. You're a Tybalt de ye. The same. Move with ease, lest we attract attention. I'd give a king's ransom if I had it to find out what my prover marshal is doing in this robber's roost. Here is a list of all those in Paris faithful to our cause. You can count on their aid when the hour comes. I can tell by your shifty look that you've been untrue to me. And you? I've been true as the stars in heaven. I know where they spend their nights. I'm not sure where you do. You! <laughs> Who is this Catherine? You wouldn't know her. She's a lady. Lady? If she be a woman and alive, you'll find a way to tilt her on her ear. I'll find a way to tilt you. <laughs> What's the foot now? Oh, you're done. This is indeed a night when old acquaintance meet. It is indeed, Francois. René de Montigny. From the old days at the university, you remember me? Yes, I do. Step aside. He's in no mood to reminisce. Francois, a quiet word with you. This man is not your enemy. Not my enemy? Only an hour ago, this puffed-up peacock struck me across my face. What shall I call him, my dearest friend? Or shall I call upon him to draw in proper combat? Beyond! In the name of mercy, drop your sword and step aside with me. Clear a space, you scum. Francois, put up your sword. If the watch comes, they'll take away my license. They can fight in the dark. They killed Tybalt. Six of one to half a dozen of the other. I'll hang whoever wins in any case.
to be still. Arrest this man. He's under sentence to be hanged. Just one moment, the Lord Provo Marshal. Not quite so fast. Captain, have this man taken to my own dungeon. Who are you that dare interfere with the king's justice? I am the king's justice. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Hey, sire. The king has our letter. You better join Burgundy. I beg of you, your Christian Majesty, to set him free. It was a fair fight. Is a criminal merely to defend yourself? No, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm sure, Master Vion, that my meaning is clear to you. And now for my Lord Provo Marshal. My Lord Dossigny, he has gone, my liege. Shall I fetch him back? Salmon, do not swim back once they have slipped through your fingers. Alas, your bird has flown, Brother Short Life. But don't fret. I'll clip his wings for him in my own time. This is not goodbye. Only au revoir. Your Majesty. <laughs> Back, Captain, lest our poet be lonely in his cell, uh, arrest his henchman. Why does he arrest us? Dostiné, what does this mean? Your orders were to stand firm in Paris. Louis found me out. He's sharper than I gave him credit. He intends to fight. He's declared a state of siege. How long can Paris stay in siege? Forever. Once all the harvests are in. Take half your mounted company. Burn every field, every haystack, every storehouse, every barn. We'll starve the spider out of his web. Another goblet. This is a body blow, sire. Burgundy has surrounded Paris with a ring of fire. It only means we must fight with tighter belts. Your Majesty, you must see that Paris, you yourself, are in great jeopardy. Now that he knows you mean to oppose him, sire, Burgundy will show no mercy. My father and his father before him had to face their Burgundies. As did the blessed Charlemagne, who first made this land one. Some of whose blood, I thank God, still flows through my veins. Sire, may I be permitted to point out that the past of France is of no help in judging its future. You must remember your father had the blessed Joan of Arc to save his throne and unite his people. Ah, yes, the humble maid of Lorraine, who broke every established rule of warfare and sent the English flying. Would that I had such an upstart now. about it. Well, you won't like it. It's not very realistic.
truth is very clear tonight. I would that Burgundy were on it. My liege. Sit down, Catherine. Listen, I won't beat about the bush. Paris is in graver danger than I care to admit to my ministers. It's either Burgundy's world or our own that must perish. But before I die, with God's help, I mean to put an end to slaughter and starvation, and to brother slaying brother in useless civil strife. Miss Burgundy puts an end to me first. I pray that time will never come. Of all the ladies at court, you're the gentlest and the purest in heart. Therefore, the one I would harm least, yet must depend on the most. Catherine de Beausel, does your heart lie with the cause of your king? My heart lies only with the cause of my king. Even to the extent of accepting as husband the man of my choice, without protest and without question? That's a great deal to ask. You know how I feel about such matters. A woman can only be guided by her heart. But if such matters vitally concerned, in actual fact, ensure the very safety of our country. If it were for France, I... It is. Yes. Good. Catherine? Uh, the other night, uh, when you were singing in the choir, some odd fish sang along with you. Uh, did you get a good look at this fellow? No, I didn't. Why do you ask? Well, you're slightly in his debt, my dear. He cleared the field of Tybalt for you. Tybalt is dead? Treason is never dead, nor is justice. Your fine-feathered suitor has been revealed in his true plumage. And your provo marshal is a traitor. One less. One less. I can trust so few. Quiet! Quiet! Stop it! Enough of it! Black-hearted swine! Treasonous lice! And you! What are you? A flea that jumped out of Louis' britches? <laughs> or a tiny little dungeon rat? <laughs> children, children! Comparisons are odious! Very <laughs> Comparisons, comparisons can often be uncouth. But there's nothing like comparison for getting at the truth. A crow on a fence tries to make some sense with his co 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 A donkey will say in his stupid way simply ho, he ho, he ho. But I heard a speech by King Louis From what he said I know We'd all be all right if the king were as bright As a donkey or a crow <laughs> Comparisons, comparisons are often impolite But there's nothing like comparisons To put the picture right a lion will growl when he's gone, look prowl, and his foes become his feet. The question is then, should a king of men ever fear the king of beasts? Well, Burgundy's known as a lion, a lion on the roam. And Louis, they say, went out hunting one day, and a rabbit chased him home. <laughs> Majesty, the king. Oh, the king. And Louis, they say, went out hunting one day, and a rabbit chased him home. Your majesty does me honor by remembering my humble verse. You have me confused, you know. There are two men, Vion the traitor and Vion the patriot. Which man are you? The latter, sire. I have no love for Burgundy. No love for Louis, eh? <laughs> <laughs> A poet needs privacy. Better book take him to another dungeon and bring him to my orchard in the morning. Oh, your orchard? It might inspire you to write your own epitaph. Francois! Francois! Not your orchard! Have mercy! He meant no harm with his verses. No harm? My beautiful child, you must be very much in love, or else you just don't listen to what you're singing. A miracle, eh, fellow book? that such a rose could blossom from the gutter.
release the prisoner. Terrible. Ah, Master Vio, how do I find you this morning? Very much surprised to find myself still alive. <laughs> Are you by any chance interested in gardening? I am. I'm particularly proud of this uh, orchard of mine. It bears unusual fruit. It does indeed, and uh, fresh every morning, too. <laughs> it's Master Law, my cook. He tried to poison me. And uh, that was Alain Marat, the court historian. His head was always in the clouds. Is there any special tree you fancy, Master Vio? I think you'd look well on this one. It's only occupied by a judge at the moment, and he'll be gone by tomorrow. By that, I assume that I will, too. The good, the bad, the foul, the fair, where are the snows of yesteryear? Your verses, I believe. Touch ostentatious, but they look well on your tombstone. <clears throat> Do you uh, nurse any belated regrets? Four or five. All women? I'm sure the place you are destined for will abound in women very like the ones you knew on Earth. With one exception. Ah, yes, I was forgetting her. The lady at the church, uh, Catherine de Vaucelle. How do you know her name? I know a lot of things no one gives me credit for. Half these gentlemen wouldn't be here if they hadn't underestimated my intelligence. <laughs> you wouldn't be here yourself if you hadn't underestimated my intelligence, would you, huh? <clears throat> I always like to grant one last request to men about to depart this life. Suppose I could arrange for you to take one last look at this uh, angel of yours. Catherine? To be near her. Maybe a week, maybe more. How would that appeal to you? I would die in your debt, my liege. Well, you'll do that anyway. But no doubt you'd die happier. That would make a nice change. These fellows always look so confoundedly sorry for themselves. That ill son that tans a man's face when he's dead. Do I quote you correctly? Come on. Things are too dead out here. Impressive, isn't it? His Majesty the King! Too loud, too loud. Master Vio, you can render your country a great service before you die. You noticed that I said the country and not king? Why the distinction, Your Majesty? Because you seem to have the impression that your king is not as patriotic as you are. The fault is not mine, sire. Nevertheless, I have a choice of two evils to offer you. Indeed? What are they? Either you may hang now, unhonored and unsung, or you may live until the hour that Burgundy retires in defeat. Come. Come along. Make yourself at home. Hey. Let's be comfortable. Sit down. But, Your Majesty, sit there. You may think better in my place. Long live His Majesty, King of the Vagabonds, in fact, of all Paris. <laughs> you may rise. <laughs> if ever a king needed another king's help, it is now. Burgundy has the nobles for allies. I have only the people. And they won't follow me, but they will follow you. Your tongue is as persuasive as your pen. And I will persuade them to save their own skins, not yours. I did think the opportunity to woo the Lady Catherine might add to your joy of living. Or should I say, loving? This must be some manner of royal jest. A great lady like Catherine would never look with favor upon me, a tavern poet, a jailbird. True, but that will all be changed when she sees what a handsome provost marshal you make. Provost marshal? Paris, to wage war in my name. One of us is stark, raving mad. Not I. Nor I. You are. If you prefer death today to precious hours with your heart's delight, one woman can make a man happier in 60 minutes than another can in 60 years. And who knows how long this siege may go on. In my grandfather's day, one lasted a lifetime. I don't believe any of this. Hang me now and let's have done with it. Ah, but not only will you alone swing in my orchard, but all your friends as well. But this is monstrous. As Provo Marshal, however, you'll have the opportunity to pardon them all. The destiny of France is in the hollow of your hand. 
I wonder if they've hanged him yet. Too bad we don't have those candlesticks we took from St. Anne's. We could light a candle for him. Well, it's more like him to have turned informer and left the rest of us here to rot. You lie in your teeth! <laughs> Never. There'll be no one else. No one like Francois. Come on, out of here, you're free. By whose mercy are we set free? By order of the new Provo Marshal. Then God reward the new Provo Marshal. We're free. Yeah. I want no freedom till I know Francois Villon is safe. He's safer than you are. Grace of merciful King Louis. Come on, get you out of here, all of you. What of my friends? Are they safe? On my honor as a king. Say rather on your honor as a gentleman, and I'd be happier. As a gentleman. Well, off with the old life and on with the new. Catherine de Vaucelle, the Count Francois de Montcorbier, Master of the Arts, Diplomat without Portfolio, from the province of Savoy. I bid you welcome to Paris, Monsieur de Montcorbier. My lady, your sir. I leave our visitor to you with your gracious consent. I have a little gardening to do before nightfall. Forgive me for staring, my lord, but you bear a great resemblance to someone I have met before. This someone must have left an indelible impression. Uh, what was his name? I cannot recall at the moment, sire. Oh, what fickle hearts these women be. I trust that you will find each other entertaining company. Excuse me. Do you share our sovereign's love of gardens? Or do you always make such haste to romantic places when you're with a lady? Never. Never? The truth, my lord. Never with such a lady as this. Tell me, why has the king brought you to the court of France? I'm afraid that's a state secret. Perhaps because you're a military man. Your rapid maneuvers leave me breathless indeed. Maybe because I find life so short. If it were only longer. Oh, what would you do? I would conquer the world. Then the world would belong to you. I would grant all your dreams. 
but her dream hasn't time now to come true. I think I have you, Master Villon. Yes, indeed, I think I have you. <gasps> Miss Bate, what is it, Mark? I have fantastic news, fantastic news, but it must be kept in strictest confidence. Now, no one knows of this except the King's Majordomo and his sister who is married the first pastry cook in the royal kitchen, and the second pastry cook. My cousin... Oh, Margaret, stop this prattle. What news? Oh, Milady, the king has selected the Count de Montcorbier as your husband-to-be. Montcorbier? Oh, I don't believe it. Must be one of his majesty's jokes. Of course, that's what it is. It's a joke. It's no joke, Milady. You must remember your promise to the king to marry anyone of his choice, if it were for France. But I promised only out of duty. What sort of farce is this? To marry a man I've known but a few hours? That impudent rogue, all full of sighs and poetry? Poetry. Rogue. François Villon. Villon, the treasonous poet? So that's it. Now I remember outside the church. But why would His Majesty play such a trick on me? I don't understand. Why, Margaret, why? Well, maybe the king just lost his mind. Oh, but my dear, to wed that vagabond. What will the court say? Oh, there'll be a scandal. Oh, no, there won't, because I won't... I won't let anyone... How dare he say such a... <sighs> Leave me alone, Margaret. Leave me alone. Beep. 
when you have none. What manner of man are you that would lend yourself to such a foul joke? Joke? Why do I say man when I mean clown? With songs and rhymes, all from an empty bag of tricks. Go play the fool at someone else's door. Wait, my lady. I'm a fool only at the king's order, but my love is sincere nevertheless. Sincere? The swooning lover, and in the next breath, your tongue wags treason through the town, vilifying the greatest king France has ever known. Great? You must be clearer than that, my lady. Do you mean great in his confusion, or great in his taxation of the poor? I mean great in the face of insurmountable odds. Great in his vision for a peaceful union of all France under one banner. You who pretend to speak for the people. Like them, you know nothing of his problems. He's surrounded by enemies, and I despise you for being another. I regret I cannot see the king through my lady's eyes. Oh, why should I waste my breath on a traitor? Flag of truce, Captain. Baron Thibault Dolsigny, Brian de Guiche, Baron Robert Chermois, emissaries from Charles of Burgundy under a flag of truce. Ah, we observe you in your true colors at last, Dolsigny. I am here as the voice of my lord Charles, Duke of Burgundy. I should say, Baron Dossigny, you've had quick reward for your treachery. But we believe you came to tell us something? Louis, self-styled king, my lord Burgundy and the noble members of the public wheel in solemn session have deemed you unsound of mind and body, unworthy to carry on the glorious traditions of our country. You have neither the confidence of the nobility nor the confidence of the people. Hardly able to rule, barely able to reign, you cling to the throne with an old man's perversity to the detriment of a great nation. Louis, your cause is lost. The Duke of Burgundy bids you surrender up this city or pay forfeit with your life and the life of every man who raises arms against him. Your Majesty, have I your permission to answer the voice of Burgundy with the voice of Louis? You have. In God's name and the King's, I bid you return to your master, Charles the Butcher, and tell him that kings are great in the eyes of their people, but the people are great in the eyes of God. And it is the people of France who answer him now with full confidence in Louis, their rightful king. Tell Burgundy we are armed enough and our storehouses are full enough for us to laugh at his threats. But when we who eat are hungry, when we who drink are dry, our answer to traitors will still be this. We will meet threat with threat, fire with fire, and sword with sword. 
Garden St. Dennis for the King of France. You have your answer. Old Dossigny, Baron of Jackals. <laughs> the last time you left Paris, if I remember, your exit was rather inconspicuous. This time we must honor you more properly. You are obviously ignorant of the laws of chivalry governing a flag of truce. You shall be returned safely, but in the manner of befitting noble traitors. Captain, take them away. Take them and await my instructions. What does this mean? It means, my lord, that at last a man of courage has come to the aid of France. You are judging me only by my words. Had you best not wait and judge me by my deeds? When I heard you give Burgundy his answer, I knew that God had sent you to us in our hour of need. Pray that I be equal to it. I pray that in the terrible hour when the enemy strikes, that France will emerge unharmed. I realize I did my lord a great injustice. On the contrary, my lady, you saw me in my true colors. Only a fool playing his part, a thief as well, but no longer the upstart lover. I see now that our king has been wiser than a woman's heart. Excuse me, my lady. My lord marshal, his majesty summons you to his private chamber. With your permission. This is Louis's answer. Sound assembly! Is that the wind or the dust from many horses? I think Cousin Charles is on the march. My liege, from a military standpoint, our situation is hopeless. If they march, the enemy outnumber us ten to one. Then we must attack, General, not defend, don't you think? Attack? We would be wiped out to a man. An attack would take them by surprise. Burgundy's too sure of himself to expect one. Your Majesty, which of us is to conduct the defense of Paris, your general or your provost marshal? Provost marshal, I'm afraid. Then I can no longer be responsible for the temper of your army, which is already divided in its sympathies. I can only suggest an honorable peace through a parley with Burgundy. And if I don't choose to parley? I shall serve my king till my last breath. My liege, with your consent, I shall arrange a court entertainment tonight. Music, dancing, and feasting. So the people of Paris may know we are confident of victory and fear no night attack from Burgundy. But will it accomplish its purpose? General Chaban can best answer that. It will serve its purpose admirably, my liege. But as it is the Provost Marshal's concern and not mine, may I be given leave to return to my duties. Is this your brilliant strategy? Won't you look rather a fool if under cover of the revelry Burgundy does attack us tonight? I shall look a far greater fool if he doesn't. In view of our desperate situation, Paris cannot stay in siege forever. I see, you're in fact forcing Chaban's hand. Why not? You and I see eye to eye on Chaban, I think. Possibly, possibly. But uh, what is your strategy? For days, a scheme has been growing in my mind for the confusion of the enemy. The first step is the ball. I see.
Your Majesty, Lords and Ladies, the Provost Marshal wishes me to announce that the play will begin at once. If he doesn't hurry, the Burgundians may be in it. <laughs> that can be seen and pretend he doesn't exist and I believe that Adam and me were the first ones on his list so watch out for the devil he's after you and me and don't go picking apples from the old temptation tree If you go, you'll never get there. You'll climb and climb, and after a time, you'll be on the bottom, sir.
Burgundy that we will show open the city gates at midnight and that our troops will offer no resistance, then it's your job to persuade the rabble to riot, promise them money, food, and plunder, let them run wild to loot and burn until the city is in chaos. What of you? Well, the people here still all powerful. Was. There is nothing weaker than a dead leader. Carry out your mission. My Lord Marshal. Excuse me, my lady. Yes? A matter of some urgency has arisen. What is the nature of this urgent business? Burgundy's master spy, the man who heads the entire conspiracy in Paris, is in the palace dungeons at last. I think you should be present when he speaks. It may alter all our plans. Shall we go? At your service. Stranger says he's alive and has spoken with him. Stranger, not the Francois, my old schoolmate. We did our lessons together before you taught him another kind. <laughs> <laughs> but is he safe? Alive as ever. <laughs> Jolly fellows, companions of the great. Francois has a plan to make rich men of us all. <laughs> and you, wine barrel, shall be queen and satisfy all thirsts. <laughs> At midnight, you are to assemble before Notre Dame. For this very night, comrades, Francois will release you forever from bondage and from want. <laughs> the long-awaited hour will have come when Paris shall belong to you and not to Louis. <laughs> you will be the lords and ladies of the future. <laughs> Francois would never leave it to this nimble tongued sharper to speak for him. It's a trick of some kind. To trap us. Maybe one of Louis's. Ah, it's a tasty trick indeed. <laughs> Shut your face, old owl. I don't believe he's free. If he were, he'd return to me. He's still at the King's Dungeon. Where are you going? To find Francois. You get to come back. The wine is free. <laughs> Little bird. And a soft one at that. Let me go. Let me go. Won't you quit me? Let me go. Not until you tell us, my pretty, what mischief you've been up to. Aren't you Francois Vion's doxy? You get? Leave her, she reeks of wine. Wait. You can help me. A spy of Burgundy is recruiting rogues for an attack on the city. Burgundy? Yes. Take me to the captain of the guards. Or to Louis himself. The king knows me. <laughs> well, he does. Now we'll see. Where's the villain? Follow me. Well, where's the Burgundian? You are talking to him. It comes as no surprise. You've strutted your last. Now we will fry those poetic wings of yours.
Let him down. Francois! I knew you were here. Oh, you're alive. Save him. Take him away. One less, one less. Oh, Francois, you must hurry. René de Montigny is rousing the people for Burgundy, saying he speaks for you. He's assembling them to riot and destroy the city. Where? Notre Dame, at midnight. Chaban will have arranged for the gates to be opened tonight. Featherbook, slay those who serve Chaban. Change all the sentries at the gates. No. Let them be opened. There comes a time when I must trust someone. Go ahead. Paris is in your hands, my friend. Thank you, sir. Once, well, take me along. I belong with you. Come. Men of Paris, when the bells chime midnight, the city is yours, and Charles of Burgundy is your new king. It is the first duty of a new king to pardon all wrongdoers. So whatever you loot during the fighting, you'll be able to keep. You lie! And Francois's heart is always been for Louis, his king and country. Are you going to listen to a tavern wench? This tavern wench speaks the truth. Burgundy's yoke. <laughs> Is anyone here dunce enough to expect quarter from Burgundy? No! no. Who burned, sacked, and murdered half the country? Burgundy! <laughs> and who joined with the British to burn the blessed Joan at the stake? Burgundy! Burgundy. 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 Who built the university? Tax the nobility? Burgundy! No! no. no. And who accused our king of making noblemen of peasants and peasants of noblemen? Burgundy! Burgundy. So, my fine scum, do you hate the king for this as Burgundy does? No. no! If you do, join the other traitors and turn Paris over to the Burgundians. Kill him! Kill him! No! Send him home to the gutter! have betrayed you. At this very moment, he is at your gates. We who can expect no quarter, shall we give quarter to Burgundy? No! Come on, you beggars of Paris town, you lousy rebel of low degree. You rebel of low degree. We beg King Louis to keep his crown and save our city from Burgundy. Our city from Burgundy. You and I are good for nothing but to die. We can die for liberty. Sons of toil and danger, will you serve a stranger and bow down to Burgundy? Sons of shame and sorrow, will you cheer tomorrow for Onward, onward, sword against the foe, forward, forward, the little burn and go. Arms of France around us break the chain that bound us and to hell with Burgundy.
Ivan has done his work well. Let's hope the spider has no surprises up his sleeve. Francois, I always thought I should die in a bed. Give me a drink. Some water, quick. Not water, wine. I have ever loved the taste of it. Too late to change now. You hail, Francois. Now you can have her. You can, little you can. Why did you waste your life on me? I want to remember that laughing face. Give me your lips.
One less, one less. Sometimes we must cut down a mast to save the ship. Long live the king of the Magabar! May I make one last public gesture in my role as Provost Marshal? You may. Citizens of Paris, your king tenders his grateful and loving thanks to you for the victory so dearly won. In the name of the king, two gold coins to everyone who fought. One, one. Two gold coins and a flagon of wine to every man, woman, and child who wishes to drink his health. François Villon. Now, sir, that wasn't your last official act. Burgundy is dead, and the time has come when you must fulfill your part of our bargain. You've had sweet parole in the company of Catherine. Now comes the bitter reckoning. A bargain is a bargain, sir. <laughs> Friends! As Provost Marshal of France, I hereby perform my final office. I declare the life of Master Francois Vian forfeit. And I pronounce on him this sentence, that he be hanged as fitting punishment for his crimes. You've heard your provost marshal pronounce sentence upon a breaker of the laws. Some of you may deem this an unjust act on my part, but I am a just, not an unjust king. If Master Vio has cause to plead against his own pronouncement, he is free to do so. I have no quarrel with the king's justice. Proceed with it. the victory against Burgundy. Pay for it with his neck. No! Is this the king who loves his people? The king we fought and bled for? Wait, my loyal captain. I see my people still doubt that I am just. Tristan, fetch me an inch of candle. Good citizens, I believe that the life of this man, Villon, is dearer to you than perhaps your own. That one who loves him best shall save him while there is still time. Oh. Oh. So long as this candle burns, so long Francois Villon's life can be bought for the price of any other. Terrible, my voice is not a strong one. I fear some of my people may not have heard me. Claim it loud and clear. The King's Grace stands ready to pardon Francois Villon. If anyone will come forth to die, that he may live. The mob was ever fickle to its favorites. Proclaim it for the last time. Who comes forth? You may proceed. Wait. I will. Lady, we speak to me. I will die for him, sire. We, oui, we. Oui. <clears throat> Loyal subjects, like Solomon of old, I did but test the metal of these two I hold most dear to me, and my heart is rich in sweet rewards. The law of France, greater than the whims of kings, protects the life of any man who weds a lady of noble estate. A union such as this is twice blessed. For be it known, the Lady de Vaucelles' estates will go toward the cost of war on Burgundy. And these two lovebirds will set forth on their life together as free and penniless as shepherds in a dell. <laughs> Sir, 
The world changes. Uh, we must change with it. One less, Milige. Two less. <laughs>